Welcome back again to, as we continue our devotion, our study into the heroes of faith, or as we've looked at these different characters. And to do that, we've been in the book of Hebrews, of course, chapter 11. So if you'd like, we're gonna look at two quick verses, really very short verses in the context. Hebrews 11, verse 30, and scripture says, by faith, the walls of Jericho fell down after they were compassed about seven days. And by faith, the harlot Rahab perished not with them that believed not when she had received the spies with peace. And so it's interesting here, there's two individuals. If we're familiar with the story at all, uh, the city of Jericho and, it, and it, God's destruction of it, we see two individuals coming from very opposite walks of life. In fact, Joshua, who were, is being referred to in verse 30, he's not even been mentioned by name because the Israel, uh, Israelite people would have known the story so well. They were familiar with Joshua. They knew of his amazing faith. Uh, they knew of that deliverance. The first mention of Joshua, if you will, let's take a look, because what is it about Joshua that we find here? So that we find that in Exodus chapter 17. Uh, if you have your Bible, and as Pastor said, I trust you do and would like to join it, it's Exodus 17, verse 9, 10, and then 14. And verse 9 says, And Moses said unto Joshua, Choose us out, men, and go out, fight with Amalek tomorrow, and I will stand on the top of the hill with the rod of God in, the, in mine hand. And so Joshua did as Moses has said to him. And then verse 14 said, and the Lord said unto Moses, write this for a memorial in a book and rehearse it in the ears of Joshua. For I were utterly put out of remembrance of Amalek from under heaven. And the amazing thing here is, you know, we don't know what had already taken place, how it had taken place, but what we find is Joshua is already in a position of leadership. He really is serving as the general, the commanding officer of, of the fighting forces that's going to take battle here. We know that Joshua had witnessed uh, the plagues brought about in Egypt, uh, by, brought about by God. We know that Joshua had witnessed the great exodus, the, the miraculous parting of the Red Sea. We know that Joshua was one of the original 12 spies uh, sent in to spy the promised land originally. And, and it was Joshua and Caleb, the only two that came back a favorable report. The only two that said, we've got utter confidence that God would help Israel conquer the land, that he would do exactly what he had promised and told him they would do. And in reality, every step of his life was preparing him for this leadership, for this position of succeeding Moses as the leader of Israel, which God we find would ordain and, and command in Numbers chapter 27. Then our other character to consider was Rahab, who comes from obviously what is a different background. And we don't know anything of her previous life, uh, that would indicate that it was ever God-filled or God-fearing. In fact, her, our first introduction to Rahab we find in Joshua chapter two. So I encourage you to, to follow me along and it's Joshua chapter two, verse one. And we read and says, and Joshua the son of Nun sent out uh, of Shittim two men to spy secretly saying, go view the land, even Jericho. And they went and came into a harlot's house named Rahab and lodged there. And I mentioned that we know that Rahab came from a totally different background than Joshua. We see actually that she's got two major strikes against her. She is not Jewish, she's a Gentile, but more importantly, she's a harlot, she's a prostitute. Now, we don't know if that was still, say, her profession, but what we do know, and it reminds us that, you know, many times what we were earlier in life, we, we may struggle to shake that tag that people put upon us. But more importantly, that doesn't have to define us and it did not continue to define Rahab. Also, we know that God already knew her heart. God already knew how he was gonna use her to even save those two spies and protect them that very night. Look with me at chapter, or verses eight, nine, 10, and 11 of chapter two. And scripture says, and before they were laid down, speaking of the two spies, she came up unto them upon the roof. And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord hath given you the land and that your terror is fallen upon us and all the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side Jordan, Shahan and Og, whom you he utterly destroyed. And as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt 
and neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. And you know, as I said, it's, this is amazing. She would go on to ask for personal physical safety, salvation, if you will, not only of herself, but of her family for, as a return of favor for, for lodging the spies. But more importantly, what we just read and saw was our clear confession unto God concerning her spiritual salvation. Her words in verse 11 to remind us said, for the Lord your God, he is God in heaven above and in earth beneath. And isn't, that's the key. She recognized God is the living God, saved by God's grace, but it was based on her faith that worked. And not only that, but I wanted to remind us or listen to her words again in, in verses 9, 10, which said, and beginning in the middle of verse 9, it says, I know that the Lord hath given you the land, and that your terror has fallen upon us, and that all of the inhabitants of the land faint because of you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when you came out of Egypt. And then actually the beginning of verse 11 said, and as soon as we had heard these things, our hearts did melt. And you know, this is actually, it reminds us, this is our working definition of faith that we started off with. The substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. They had not witnessed these things, but they had heard, they had known the truth. It wasn't doubted, it wasn't fable, it was, it was fact. And it had brought fear unto them to see God's deliverance. You know, neither Joshua or Rahab could have possibly imagined how God was gonna just miraculously have the walls collapse and fall down upon merely walking and shouting, if you will. Humanly, Jericho was said was a city that was undefeatable, but we're reminded that nothing is impossible with God. Victory in the Lord requires a winning faith, active and obedient to God's word. Joshua, as God's chosen successor to Moses, who would finally lead the nation of Israel into the promised land, you know, seemingly exhibited faith or great faith in God at every crossroad in his life, every time where he was brought to mention. Rahab, whose declaration of great, great faith in God was ultimately rewarded in that she was not only in the ancestry of King David, ultimately Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. God uses individuals from every walk of life. I want us to remember that today. No mountain is too high. No sin is too great. No past is too dark and, and clouded that cannot be overcome when we place our faith in God and the power of that faith. I like what John MacArthur has recently said, and it was in response to a question that he was asking, how should Christians respond to this COVID crisis? And he said, now is the time to manifest our faith. We are to be the most sane, the most rational, and the most reasonable people because we have the living hope. We know where we're headed. Our eternity is settled. He went on to say that it's an opportunity for Christian people who say and confess that they trust in the Lord to demonstrate their faith by being stable, hopeful, and yes, it can even be joyful. Can I simply ask you and, and leave you with this thought that if, if that doesn't describe your faith as it's been lately and, and even the weeks and days to come, Make today that first day to put your faith to work. Make it a renewal of faith to trust the living God that we believe in. God bless and continue to remain safe and well. Look forward to seeing you back again.